Welcome to NFL Live. It's LSU's Pro Day featuring quarterback Jaden Daniels, a speedy Malik Neighbors. We'll get to that. And Brian Thomas Jr. Lewis Riddick is there, caught up with Jaden Daniels after his workout. Tell me what you thought about your workout, how it went today. Uh, it went well. I think we showcased a lot of things. Um, you know, obviously, you know, receivers uh, putting everybody in the best position. Mm -hmm. um, some throws I went back. Uh, I wish, you know, it felt good coming with my hand, but a little too yeah. strong. But, you know, it was, it was a good overall day. You know, it, it looked like you really were conducting this workout. You don't always see that from quarterbacks. A lot of times they have a quarterback coach with them. Yeah. It seemed like, you know, you would run a couple of routes and get the guys back together and kind of talk through what you wanted to do next. Is that something you purposely wanted to take control of today? I mean, that's something I've been doing ever since I got to LSU. So it's nothing that changed. Um, for me, it's like the same guys that I came in with. We, we grew up together. Uh, we all had a respect level for each other. So uh, me and my quarterback coach, uh, Taylor Kelly, came, came with a script. Um, he was like, here, it's your, it's your script, it's your, it's your key. So, you know, go do it. You can't be a leader if your teammates don't respect and trust you. So at the end of the day, you got you to gotta show that you work hard and that you care about the game of football. Uh, you care about it in the locker room at the end of the day, and then, you know, they'll follow you. Ever since, you know, I came in, I was 18 years old at Arizona State, uh, leading the locker room. Um, you know, I had, had guys that were older than me, you know, they followed me coming here. Uh, brand new star 21 and, you know, having to regain the locker room, uh, relearn the locker room and have everybody give my respect and my trust um, and vice versa. So uh, that's something that I've been, I've been dealing with since I was young. You know, through this process, through this draft process, what has been like maybe one or two things that people have wanted to know about you the most? Like, what are the questions that you keep hearing people ask you about the most. How much I weigh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I, can, look, I, can just, I can just tell people now. 210 look, pounds. There, there you go. And, and I can tell you this, look, people, looking at him up close and personal, which I got a chance to go like last year on the quarterback circuit and saw Bryce and saw yeah. CJ. I can tell you this, look, he's put together now. So everybody out there who's worried about his weight, don't worry about his weight. What works for Jaden Daniels? Like, what kind of structure works for you? What, what do you want out of an organization? Because I think it's important yeah. for you to interview them as much as they're yeah. interviewing you. So what do you want? What are you looking for? I mean, organization is going to uh, invest in me. Obviously, you know, they're investing a lot of money in me. But uh, on and off the field, you know, as a, as a person, as a man, uh, that's something that LSU did here. Arizona yeah. State did. Uh, coming at 18, they invested in me as a, as a, as a young man. You know, coming to LSU, they invested in me as a man. Um, and show that I'm the guy, you know, they're going to do everything in their power to make me successful. Um, and then from there, you know, it's about me putting in the work. And, you know, I, I, I bet on myself every time. Lewis Riddick joining us now from LSU. I love the little jokes you guys got in there, too. What did you think, Lou, of Daniel's workout today? Look, Laura, he, when you see him up close and personal, you just see how powerful he is but how smooth and fluid he is at the same time meaning this when he wants to really drive the football it comes out of his hand like a bullet I mean it's just absolutely just ripping through the air and it gets there in a hurry when he wants to put touch on it he can make those touch throws when he wants to throw outside the pocket in simulated uh, out of structure throws he can throw it with both touch or he can throw it with power so quite honestly he has the full range you know, within his toolkit that he can go to. And I, and I think his wide receivers also, you know, with Malik and Brian, I mean, th those guys are just fantastic, fantastic athletes. And you could just tell that this is, this is the highest quality college football that you could possibly get, both in terms of the way these guys conducted themselves, how they got along, and then how they performed out here on the football field. I mean, I was, I was giddy watching it. Like, like this, this is the elite of the elite here. And you can tell mm. that these kids – or these young men are the very best this country has to offer going into the pros, and that's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, as I know you know, Lewis, because you watched a lot of LSU. Watching LSU last year offensively, you would think that they were a well-oiled machine. Now, two likely first-round wide receivers there you mentioned working out with them. What did you see from Malik Neighbors and Brian, Brian Thomas Jr.? You know, there's such a contrast in terms of body type and style and the way that they move. Look, Malik is powerful, very, you know, he's got a Jamar Chase-like lower body, a Debo Samuels-like lower body, almost built like a running back. But you could tell today before he did his vertical jump where he verticaled 42, you could see the spring he has in his legs. I mean, he's, he's like a pogo stick. He's just so powerful. And he's a guy who's going to be able to work inside or outside. And then with Brian, you see the guy who's much longer, the guy who's even more fluid, who you can tell has a second, third, fourth gear down the field. A lot, you know, maybe not as demonstrative as Malik is from a personality standpoint, but they really do play off of one another. And you can see, like, if you were building a wide receiver room, those are the two type of guys you would want. You would want the strong, powerful, run-after-the-catch guy, 
And then the guy who's really maybe the more traditional outside lane guy that can go get the deep ball. I mean, it, it's just, look, if you're Brian Kelly, you're sitting there going, man, I hope we got some people that can replace these two because these guys are absolute studs, both of them. Yeah, that's the thing about LSU, though. They just, like, reload every single year, and they are top of the top, yeah. cream of the crop there. What did you take away from Daniel's workout and the interactions that you saw? Well, I'll say this. The first thing is I just love the way Lewis gushed over ah. Louisiana State University. It was just music to my ears. But it was a very professional pro day, especially when you're speaking on Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and Brian Tom Thomas Jr. Also, some of the things you saw from some of the younger wide receivers who were allowed to be a part of this pro day in order for Jaden Daniels to get through his script. I was one of the more popular people there because that 18-year-old that Jaden Daniels was talking about going to ASU played with my son, Jordan and to watch him grow to watch the command he had over this simulated style of passing the routes the way that he brought in all of the wide receivers it was amazing but to me I had never really been to one of these big time quarterback pro days and when I walked away I thought to myself that's what it's supposed to look like the ball is barely supposed to hit the ground he's supposed to have full command of throwing the football everywhere he wants on the field and when you think about a Jaden Daniels you would often think that something like this where it was just about your ability to place the football maybe it wouldn't be as spectacular as some of the other noted pocket passers but it was absolutely spectacular it was amazing and I thought the way that he conducted himself as a leader truly showed throughout this entire day yeah there's a lot of like when you hear you RC and then Lewis talk about it you sit there and go well it's just a pro day but then you go well it sounds like the pro day looks just like the tape you know and when you watch this yeah. young man's tape that's what you love about it is there's this consistency that is repeatable. The ability to see the coverage change versus Auburn, two safeties to one safety. No, the only throw I can make is this seam ball, but I can't throw the seam up the top of the numbers because the corner is overlapping. So I have to bleed this safety or this seam to the hash, but I can't throw it across the field. It has to be on the hash and in timing. That looks like a pro day throw, except it's in real life football, an 11 on 11. And then I often say, what is transferable well understanding of coverage I've got four verticals but a stop right at the bottom of the screen so you have to make th the right decision everybody's covered up so the stop is the only throw then it has to be on time you have to throw it before the receiver comes out of his cut because it's man-to-man -man coverage you have to throw the receiver down his stem or where he just came from and then you have to give him the right ball so he can do something with it after that looks like a pro day throw it just happens to be in yeah. real life mm -hmm. game so it's it's lovely yeah. to hear that you watch things on tape and it looks a certain way. And then when you watch the person on really one of the biggest days of their life transfer all that over and it looks the same. That's where I sit here and I go, that's why I would take them number one because everything is so consistently repeatable. Hmm. You know, oftentimes the journey is more important than the destination. So I, I'll go back on the journey of, of Jaden Daniels. I cover college football for ESPN. And I remember sitting in the studio the night that Florida State came to the Superdome. It was his first game starting for LSU. Yeah. And he looked like a deer in the headlights that night. Fast forward. Now he's the Heisman Trophy win winner, and I doubt he's going to get out of the top two picks. And so the last time I talked to him, I asked him, I said, hey, man, what changed? Because I remember watching you that night, and I remember seeing you now. What changed? And he said, book. It's the first time this past offseason that I've, given, I've been given an, an opportunity to work with the same coaches, the mm. same receivers. And so we're not trying to put an offense in. We were really fine-tuning our craft. And so you have a player now that's gotten so much better from year one to year two at LSU. You have a player now who is ascending. You yeah. have a player now who, when you build an offense around and give him an opportunity to learn that offense, you can see the trajectory in which he's going to go. We can talk about all these other players. Here's what I know about Jaden Daniels. I've seen the last two years. I've seen where he's gone, and I asked him to explain to me why he got there. And he explained it so eloquently about the familiarity and the consistency and the playbook and all the athletes. All they did was work on football all offseason. Yeah. And so if you draft this guy number one or number two overall, you're going to get a player that when you give him the offense and allow him to get better and better, you've already seen 
what you're going to get from year one to year two at LSU. And I can't wait to watch his rookie year and going forward with whatever team he goes to. Yeah, Daniels averaged 11.7 yards per pass attempt last season, best in a season in FBS history. And even during the season, I talked to Brian Kelly a few times. They were saying, we actually want him to take more risks. We want him to do more, be even more aggressive. He yeah. started to do that at times yes. as well. I think that's even what Boog's talking about, the development throughout a season that you'll see at the next level. And Matt Miller is back with us. What did you see from each? Each of the stars today at LSU's Pro Day. Let's start, Matt, with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, they definitely did not disappoint, which is what we expected. Uh, here's something interesting with Jaden Daniels. He had not met with NFL teams before today. He didn't do that at the Combine. He has meetings set up with the New England Patriots, the Washington Commanders, New York Giants, Minnesota Vikings, Denver Broncos, Las Vegas Raiders. Not the Chicago Bears, which is interesting. They have the first pick. You would think they would be talking to all the quarterbacks. As of yet, that has not been scheduled. As far mm. as the throwing today, everything I heard, Jaden did really well. He did miss a little bit on a couple deep balls, but this was a really good workout for him, and I think he's still locked in as a top three pick in this year's draft. Now, you mentioned Malik Neighbors put on an absolute clinic. We didn't see him test at the NFL Scouting Combine. He waited for today. It was awesome. 435 unofficial at 199 pounds. Also a 42 inch vertical jump. He is the most explosive wide receiver in this year's draft. And something I reported on here with you guys back at the Senior Bowl is that a lot of NFL teams believe he's the best wide receiver in this draft. Some of it goes down to fit and scheme, but Neighbors certainly has a ton of fans that could get him as that top wide receiver in this year's group. And I love that you mentioned Brian Thomas Jr. He had a couple of fantastic catches today on vertical routes. He's the guy who did test at the combine, ran a 4-3-3. He is a player that in most drafts we'd be talking about as a number one wide receiver because of how well he plays the ball vertically. 17 touchdowns last year that led the nation. He was a breakout star as Jaden Daniels improved his deep ball. And again, in most drafts, Brian Thomas is a top 10 pick. He's a wide receiver one. He's a player that will be a rookie starter in the NFL. And it's weird because there's elements of Justin Jefferson in his game, the way mm. he attacks the ball deeply. But because we have these great wide receivers in Neighbors and Roma Dunze and Marvin Harrison Jr., we're kind of forgetting about Thomas, who uh, in my most recent mock draft that came out today was the number 12 overall pick. Yeah, I liked where you put him because uh, I do think he, he does get overshadowed a little bit and he shouldn't. Let's continue on with some of these LSU players. Last season, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. became the third pair of teammates in LSU history to each have at least 1,000 receiving yards in the same season. They're in good company, okay? Joining a group of players who have been highly successful at the NFL level in Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson, those pairs, of course, we all know about. Lewis Riddick caught up with neighbors after the pro day today. How aware are you of the debate that's starting to really heat up right. about who's the number one receiver in this draft? How aware are you of that? How much do you care? Very aware. You know, <laughs> I, I care about it, you know, a lot more. You know, if you were, if you, if you were asking Justin Jefferson the same thing when he came out, um, he would be saying the same thing because a sure. lot of those guys had him as receiver two, receiver three. And, you know, look where he is now. So I would say that dog mentality doesn't stop no matter, you know, yep. what, what rank that we go in. You know, we're always going to be based as wide receiver one. And if and if we don't get there or they don't put us there, we're going to show you why. Right. So even if I get put at receiver one, I know that guy is going to be right behind me trying to prove everybody wrong. So, you know, it's going to always be a battle between, you know, us three or us two. Yeah, I mean, can we just, like, keep watching that over and over yeah, again? Man. Goodness. Uh, RC, you were at the Pro Day. What did you see from Malik Neighbors? I'm emotional, guys. <laughs> I, just, I just, I mean, can we start putting some respect on LSU wide receivers, please? When you look at Malik Neighbors and his excitement after jumping the 42, the way he and Jaden Daniels embraced after the 40, that's that competitive spirit, that nature that I was talking about, that personality. This dude could play defense if he wanted to from a personality standpoint. Talking to his coach, Cortez Hankton, after the pro day, he was saying he doesn't get arm tackled. He runs through single tackles. He's a guy that once he catches the football, he turns into a different player. He talked about the way he plucked the football out of the air. He's a natural wide receiver by skill, by trade, but he has the body of a running back. 
much like Jamar Chase when he was coming out of LSU. I understand Marvin Harrison Jr. went into this year and people looked at him as a transcendent talent. And he probably still will be wide receiver number one. But Malik Neighbors has star written all over him. But the thing I love the most is that today meant something to him. And he said it even to Lewis. Being number one matters. And if I'm not number one, I'm going to show you why I should have been number one. And if I am number one, I'm going to work every day to prove to you that the guy behind me never will be. I love that about him. Yeah, Malik Neighbors is Steve Smith and Tyreek Hill in a combination. Yeah. You know, when you watch him, it the strength, the violence that he plays with reminds me of Steve Smith, who's one of the, in our generation, RC, you played against them. Yes. The best. Monster. And when it comes to yep. the explosive element, when you watch this tape, you're like, oh, my gosh, just get him the football. That's why, like, he's Debo, but more explosive in a way. And I, I love how RC referenced his skill set is a true wide receiver. I wanted to ask Matt a question. I understand the quarterback factors into this question. I yes. haven't watched a ton of Marvin Harrison clip by clip by clip. I've seen every snap offensively of LSU. The tape's not that close this year, right? Between Marvin and Malik? Not this year. No, not this year. Marvin has some drops this year that were different. And while he's fast, he's not explosive. I think Marvin is more A.J. Green. I, I love the Steve Smith, mm. Tyreek Hill mashup. I, that's, that's a great one. <laughs> but I think Marvin is much more, like, it's almost poetic watching him run routes yeah. and, and the late hands now he adjusts for balls. But Neighbors is, I mean, he plays with a jet pack on. There's just, right. there's, it's a very different type of wide receiver. Yeah, you know, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. certainly had the injuries he was dealing with. Sure. There, there were and a the few quarterback things. play is different. The quarterback play is huge. Yes. The way yes. the offense operates is huge. But either way, I agree, the tape is a lot different. It's very far off this year with Malik having the edge there.